I not on? Now I am. Are we do we gonna do that all over? I wasn't I wasn't on a while ago, so stand up. We're gonna do it right this time. Stand up and turn to your neighbor and say, "Be like Jesus." All right. Hallelujah. Just so we get it. Just so we get it right. He who follows me walks not in darkness, says the Lord. You guys know that passage. In a minute, I'm going to have you turn your Bibles to Ephesians 5. But he who follows me walks not in darkness, says the Lord. By these words of Christ, we are advised to imitate his life and habits if we wish to be truly enlightened and free from the blindness of our heart. Let your cheap effort, your best effort, go forward, therefore, and study the life of Jesus Christ. That's what he requires for us to do. Study his word. A friend of mine, Jordan, I talked to him this week. And he is so fired up for Jesus. He wants everything that God has for him. Mike, he's, he's willing to go whatever program he's got to get in, whatever college he's got to go to, whatever, whatever he's got to do to get knowledge of who Jesus is, how to imitate him, how to walk as he walked, how to be as he is. And that's amazing. Turn his life totally around. Jordan, you stand up so everybody can say hi to you. Hallelujah. Turn his life around. He's grabbing hold of it. He's grabbing hold of the things of God, and he wants more and more and more. And I advised him. I said, we got to grab hold of every bit of knowledge that we can from people, from, from the Word of God, but we also have to have that heart knowledge. You know, we can be full of head knowledge and know all kind of things, but not have a heart knowledge to align that with. So head knowledge is very valuable as well as the heart knowledge. Let's pray. Father, we just praise you this morning. We glorify you first and foremost, God, for what you're doing here today. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we get to sit in the presence that's so sweet. We thank you, Father, that we get to enjoy being here in the house of the Lord. We get to bring something every time we come to let it go and let it be released into the atmosphere. We thank you, Father, for who you are, for who we are in you. God, and I know that you've carved us out of a place of your heart, and we thank you that we get to go back into that place and rest when we're weary. So we thank you, we glorify you, we magnify you. In Jesus' name, amen. So there was a saying when, um, back when I was like 26, 27. It was WWJ. What's that stand for? What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? <laughs> what would Jesus do? Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Turn your Bibles to Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. It says, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children. Verse 2. Walk in love just as Christ also loved you. He gave himself up for us an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. What do you smell like to God? I mean, what does it smell like? What are you doing? What you're doing? You know, we've been, we just got through Thanksgiving, you know, and still um, some people are still having those leftovers and all those things from Thanksgiving. I didn't get to eat much because of this plan I'm on, but I got to smell the food. And I tell you what, man, I mean, I, it was just all, I just went up and I just smelled stuff. Like, man, and I could taste it as I was smelling it, but I didn't eat it. But and I, I had good, uh, except for someone made some cinnamon rolls. Thank you for making those cinnamon rolls and dropping them on our porch. I broke my whole thing and ate a cinnamon roll because they were so, so good. So bless you for doing that. And, but no, I was smelling the food and I was like, man, this is so good, so good. But can you imagine, what does God smell in your life? 
Because if, if Jesus' death was a sweet aroma, what Jesus did was a sweet aroma, what, what do we smell like to him? I mean, what is it? I mean, is it, is it nasty? Is it sinful? Because I don't think sin smells good. I don't know exactly what it smells like, other I know what it looks like and feels like. And maybe at times I've maybe got a whiff of maybe what it would smell like, but I don't know. But I want to send in a fragrance to God that he just like, enjoying that. What would Jesus do? But I want to talk to you this morning about a little bit about what would Jesus not do? What are some things that Jesus would not do? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use you guys. Do I have a mic? Can I have that mic? I'm not, hold on, I just need the mic real quick. All right, so I'm going to give you, I'm give you an opportunity to be on camera this morning. Um, if you know of something that Jesus would not do, I want you to stand up and I want you to come and say something that Jesus would not do. Come here. Real quick, I'm going to hold the mic and that way I've got control. Jesus would not lie. Would not lie. He would not, thank you. Jesus would not lie. Do we lie? Jesus would not lie. So those are, that's something we won't do. If you lie, then, then you're not doing something that Jesus would do. Rosalyn, you have something? Yeah. What would Jesus not do? Be, I mean, be specific, because I want, I want everyone to know from our perspective what we see that Jesus wouldn't do. Jesus would not have any sexual impurity toward male or female. There we go. This is from your lips, but it's also in the Word of God. Amen. Shouldn't lie. Man with a man, woman with a woman. It's all in the Word of God. If you, if you really want to know the Word of God, it's there. He would never leave or nor forsake you. Jesus will never leave you. He will never forsake you. It's in the Word. These are things that we don't do. We don't leave people. We don't forsake people. Anyone else? You guys are all scared. We can turn the camera off. Come here, come here Bob. I got it. Thank you. He uh, would not. He would not have any evil thoughts toward his brother. Yeah. Or his enemy yeah he loves his enemy as himself yeah isn't that good I had an experience I should not go on <laughs> so what he says is is uh, love your neighbor do not not love your neighbor enemies talking about people in the world we, we do have enemies in the world that 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 are you know um, there's people I can think of that probably wouldn't hang around with daily, but, um, but I love them and I want, to, want them to see heaven. Um, but let me make clear what he said. God is not in love with, with Satan. Do not. Satan will pay the price. All right. He would not kill. He would not kill. So what she said, he would not kill. Listen, he would not kill the innocent. Okay. He would not kill the innocent. We can take that to a certain term, but he would not kill the innocent. Um, there is scripture in the Bible. There is things that have happened in the Bible that, that um, death has happened. Not, that, uh, not because of God wanted to kill people, but because of sin and because of the fall of man. Things have happened. Death has happened. Things like that's happened. All right, come here. He would not gossip. He would not gossip. That's a very good one. We can do that one again. He would not gossip. <laughs> he would not gossip. He would not never walk by faith. Not never walk by faith. He would always walk by faith. Thank you. Back to the kill. The Bible says, do not kill. Thou shalt not kill. He would not separate the covenant between man and woman. Yeah. Husband and wife. Yeah. Not his will. The covenants are broken. God is a covenant keeper covenant maker and a covenant keeper Jesus would not strike a woman Jesus would not strike a woman whoa 
He would not. He would not. Nor should a woman strike a man. It goes both ways. Jeremiah 29, 11 says he would not harm us. He will 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 not. I was going to say the gossip thing, but I praise God that I knew. something else that he wouldn't do? Yes. He's not stingy. God is not stingy. He provides for his children. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. In some of these areas we're talking about, there's, there's, it could be controversial to some extent, and there's some definition of some of them, but, but for, the, for the most part, it's, this is all. He wouldn't have pride. Yeah, no pride. No pride. Pride comes before the fall. Anything else? Anybody else? He would not force you to accept. Yeah, would not force you to accept. We have choice. Everyone has free choice. Do drugs. He would not do drugs, Cody. Thank you for that. Uh, I like that one. You would not judge by skin color. Would not judge by skin color. Would not. Would not. God is so amazing. He's so amazing. One more. One more real big one that God would not do. You got it. This Jesus it. would not live in fear. Whoa. He would not fear. He wouldn't. He wouldn't fear. These are the things that God would not do. Aren't you grateful for that? I'm going to read some passage to you here. Turn your Bibles to John, 1 John. We're going to do chapter 1 and 6 verses into chapter 2. You don't have your Bible, she'll have it on the screen. Starting with verse 1 of, of 1, 1 John, not John, 1 John chapter 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was from the Father and was manifested to us. That which we have seen and heard declaring to you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. Can we just laugh for a minute? That was fake. That was real. See, you learned a difference between fake and real. Right there. Illustration. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. No darkness at all. And if we say that we have, listen, if we say that we have fellowship with him and we walk in darkness, what do we do? We lie. Someone said we do not lie. God does not lie. If we say we have fellowship and we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another in the blood of Jesus Christ. His son cleanses us from all sin. Verse 8, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. That's powerful. Verse 1 of, of chapter 2. Little children, these things are right unto you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate, Jesus, advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Listen, that doesn't give you permission to sin. It just says, if you do sin, you have the Son of God who's going to stand in and cover you with the blood. And he himself is the portion for the sin, and not only ours, but the, also for the what? The whole world. Cover for the whole world. 
Now, by this we know that we know him. Listen, by this we know that we know him. Listen, read. First John is amazing. Just read it and 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 understand what he's saying. He's not saying that we sin. He said, if you, don't, if you say that you've not sinned, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Okay? We can live a life that is without sin. We really can live that kind of a life. And then we make a mistake, and we, then we, we do sin, and then he steps in as our advocate for that sin. But not that we have to continue to live in sin, because that's not truth. You don't live in sin. You don't live a sinful lifestyle. You don't stay there, because you grow, and it grows in you, the goodness. Where are we at? Um, the world. By this that we know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. Jesus came and took all the Ten Commandments and put them in two. Do you know what they are? Say it out loud. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar. There's that liar again. And the truth is not in him. But whosoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. But we know that we are in him. By this we know that we are in him. By what? Practicing the truth. Perfected in the truth. We know that we are in him. He says, he abides in him ought himself also to. So if you say you abide in Christ, you also ought to what? Walk as he walks. Walk as he walks. That's John 2, 6. The TPT version says, not just by saying I am intimate with God, but by walking in the footsteps of Jesus. All right, I have a couple of volunteers that are going to come up here. They're, they're already picked, so um, come up. Half of you on this side and half of you on this side. It's going to be good. You're going to love this. Maybe. I don't know. So if we're to walk in the footsteps of Jesus, it'll start out something like this. It'll start out something like this. You know, Jesus is, Jesus is you know, he's doing this. And he's doing this. And then, then he starts to get to the disciples and they start... You know, walking in, and everyone else has got their own dance, their own walk. Where's Uve's dance at? <laughs> but we have our own thing, our own style, our own way. But Jesus wants us to walk how he walked, in the footsteps of Jesus, doing exactly what he said. Hallelujah. All right, let's start following me now here, people. <laughs> So slowly, as you grow these disciples, they're just going to be like, just walk like Jesus walked and do the things that he did. They won't always line up right away. There's some that are going to get out of line. They're going to walk halfway. They're going to walk some way with Jesus. And then they're going to come down like this. And they're going to bring it in like... All right, we can all be one in court now. Can we do it? Everybody? Thank you, guys. So, so walking as Jesus walked is very valuable, very important, because we'll walk as Jesus walked until we get in one accord with him. When we walk as he walked, we'll see how, and sometimes, and I've said this, that people are going to get an encounter with you first at times, and then they'll use that encounter, and then they'll meet Jesus for themselves and come back to you and say, wow, I met him for myself. I don't have to go off your encounter. I get to go off my own encounter with him. So those are some of the things. But Jesus wants us to walk as he walked, do the things he did. That's why he taught his disciples. And Shelly and I just went and saw um, at, the, at the movie theater, we just saw part uh, three or the first start of um, the third series of Chosen. And uh, there's a few things in there that might be a little bit off, I, you know, just on what the theology of it. But for the most part, it's right on. It's dead on. Can you imagine the disciples, you know? The, imagine Jesus just like, if he walked, you know, and he had maybe he'd just walk like this with a little bit of a twist. Not that he did, but can you imagine them behind the scenes like, I wonder why he does that. I wonder why he walks that. And then they all start, you know, 
Because we're imitators. We imitate people. You know, I mean, I mean have you ever seen, have you ever seen um, there's a new fad, or it's probably not a new fad. You know, you just, just hang your pants down. I'm not going to do it, but so everybody just, next thing you know, fads change, things change. I mean, you know, the, when I was growing up, I mean, I, I got like, holes in my jeans. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Them kids that tear you up because you're so poor, you got holes all in your jeans. Now look at all of them. <laughs> They're paying extra for patches now to get patches in the jeans. It's got holes in them. Man, I had a style going back then just by being poor. And man, that, that whole poor style come back around. But can you imagine what it would what they were back there discussing? Like, man, he does this. You know, wow, why does he do that? Or some of the things that Jesus said, you know, and they're like, wow, that that that's that's crazy. We're supposed to do that. We're supposed to live like that. Like, 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 like we're supposed to live in marriage. Before we are living with someone, we're supposed to be married before we're in a house with someone. Like, like, we're, this could go deep. I'm not going to go there. But, because it could go real deep. But can you imagine, can you imagine what it would be like, the things that, the things that Jesus would speak to them in the private times, and he would say, listen, guys, listen, we can't do that. No, you can't step to your wife like that. You can't step to your husband like that. You can't talk like this. You can't talk like that. The F-bomb here and the F-bomb there. Well, it doesn't say it in the Word of God that I can't say it. <laughs> but that's the... the doesn't specifically say don't cuss the F word is what I'm saying people if you don't find it in there I mean you guys will read between the lines when it comes to sinning but you won't read between the lines when it comes to living for him giving him the benefit of the doubt I mean can you imagine them back behind the scenes like man all I said was um, well back then you could call your wife woman that was like an honoring thing but if I say to my wife now hey woman get over here that's like a disrespectful for whatever reason, but that's an honoring thing in the, in the Word of God. It's honoring. When they called you woman, that was like an honor. Now, the tone could change the whole thing. Woman, get over here, or woman, come over here. And so, can you imagine the disciples back talking about this? Man, all these things that Jesus wants to do, how he wants us to live. And they, they started walking as he walked, and he watched them. He watched them walk. He saw them. He corrected their walk. No, I do it like this. If you study the, the Hebrew culture, you know, when they followed the um, leader of them, when they followed the scribes and Pharisees, on, they really this did exactly, kind of imitated each other all the time. Like, like if he just swung something, they would just be behind him swinging it. The smoke would just swing it. Well, he's doing it, so I'm doing it. The imitating, the imitating, the imitating. And we have learned to imitate things that are not of God. We've learned to imitate things of the world, things that are not, that God would have us imitate, things that are not representing heaven or representing Jesus. Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle, and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls why will you find rest because he has literally carved us out of part of his heart we're part of the heart collectively of Jesus and I do believe that you can go rest in that place in John 13 15 for I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. So you, so as Christ starts showing you these things, doing these things, this is what he is expecting us to do now. He's not here right in front of us. He lives inside of us. And, 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 and when Jesus left so Holy Spirit could come, he brought Holy Spirit as a guide 
So now you have this conscious thing. You have this thing, Holy Spirit, which is a person that is part of you now. And the person will say, you know, um, Jimmy, don't do this. Don't do it. Don't do it, Jimmy. But when Jimmy goes ahead and does it, there's a price to pay for it. But the Spirit gave him a way out. Aren't you thankful for that? You know, it's not Jesus here, right here going, don't do this, don't do that. He sent the Spirit. He walked on earth and showed them how to walk personally right before their eyes. They got to see it. Now it's the Spirit in our mind telling us what we should or should not do. We can make our own choice and do whatever we choose to do, and many of us do. We choose to get into bad things after God has said, don't do this, don't do this. Don't do this. And we've stepped into those things and got into um, these, these bad habits. This, this here, this thing right here is a bad habit for a lot of people. No, I'm serious. I, I, I really almost wish we'd go back to landline because this is, this is destroyed some people. The access that you have with this of anything that you want to touch the access that you have, anything you want to touch is right there. Are you showing me as an example, Shelly? Wait, you got something you want to say? <laughs> it goes. There's a lot of things that would probably go with the message today, Shelly. Come up here. I'm just being obedient because we are... Um, we, we're, we're going to be in a hotel next week, so I just want to make sure it's all good. Like, like we're all happy, and she's happy with me. And oh, my word. I just lost it. Hold on. So Hold on. She's, got, she's getting it. Well, I just had it, and it, it left. It left. So this morning about 5.30. This is what you do do, not what you don't do. You do do this. Oh, man. I'm sure. so sorry. It, it... No, it's all right. We're being patient. Okay. God has been patient with us. I got it. Okay, so about 6 a.m., the Lord woke me up very clearly, and he said, um, he showed me the word righteousness. So it was on top, righteousness, and there was an equal sign, and it said right living. So I just wake up to that. Righteousness equals right living. I said, Lord, what are you showing me here? <laughs> And then he said, tell them to set up a standard against mm -hmm. it, meaning maybe what you're struggling with or what the battle is. And so I was just laying there thinking, um, I mean, I can't believe how well it goes with Randy's charge. And I contemplated coming up instead of doing offering to kind of share this. And I felt the Lord say, wait. And then it just goes right along with this message. So it's not at all that we, as pastors, even for the body of Christ, we don't want to come, we're not judging or come under condemnation towards people at all. When there's things you're doing in your life that aren't up to par with the Lord's word, it gives an opening for the enemy to come in like a flood. So in my mind, when he said set up a standard against it, I was thinking of Ephesians. Well, it's in Isaiah. So it says, the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. So what that is, is when we choose righteous living and right ways to please God, we're really not going to have a lot of junk that comes at us. Does that make sense? Nope. But it's not at all saying you're all a bunch of sinners and you're all going to, you know, that's not in our hearts. We know there are things in people's lives that may be hard to overcome, or, but we're loving how the freedom we're seeing in the water. Really, in two years, we have only counseled two people maybe. People are getting in the water yeah, get healing. and Jesus is meeting them in the water and we don't have to say a word to them because his truth, it is the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth that draws us 
into all things of truth of what his word says and how he nudges us to make the right choice. Does that make sense? So that was on my heart at 6 a.m. And I just, I mean, I even told Tammy this morning when I first got here, I said, man, this is just like burning in me. And so when Randy starts speaking and then some of Jason's scripture, I'm like, wow, this just goes so along with this. So, you know, there is no condemnation. There is no judgment from our hearts whatsoever. But just to pray about and ask the Lord to give you a plan to make a righteous choice. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because as we set up the standard against our issues, the Lord is going to come in and bring victory. Is that right? So our whole purpose of life is to live victorious lives. Yeah. Um, as free as we can live just to enhance his kingdom and further his kingdom just all for his glory. All right. Thank you, Shelly. You're amazing. She is amazing. She's truly amazing. Where was I at? But this thing right here, I mean, I mean literally, I, I, just, I just want to be honest with you right now, guys. I mean, raise your hand if you have a problem with, the, with being on the phone too much. I mean, I'm not going to raise my hand because I don't. But if you do, listen, this is the thing. Ask the Lord about it. Ask the Lord about what you're on. I mean, how many social sites can there be to be on? I mean, my lands. I will check my Facebook. So if you Facebook me, uh, probably not going to get back with you. Even a friend requests me, probably not going to request you. It might be a month, two months down the road. So I might get to that part. Oh, wow, there's someone that, there's like 100 people on there. And then you got to go through and you got to find out which ones are actually legit that are not trying to mimic your site so they can hack your site. So you got to go through and just, I'm like, I don't even have time for it. So when I pick it up, I'll look and see maybe what my grandkids, and I'll do like five posts and I'm done. Um, some of you can probably go check your um, status time. You can probably go right now and check your status time on your phone and see where you, how long you were on a certain thing and a certain thing, and probably not going to be good for you. Because you take that and then your prayer time. Some of you use this for business, and I know that part, but I'm talking about your, your, your personal time on your phone as far as with the social media and then your prayer time. And see where those are. Let's try to balance those out a little bit. I mean, that's, that's fair. Balance those out those things. Now, some of you, I just think, it's, I just think it's, it's correction that we should start learning how to balance, balance our time out on, on, our, on our cellular devices. I really don't know that Jesus would have one. I really don't know that he would. Um, maybe he would because he, you know, he could like transport himself well, here, there, wherever he wants to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right here. Yeah, he already knows, so he wouldn't have to have it. But I really, I, really don't, I really don't think he'd walk around with a cell phone in his hand. Maybe a jukebox. <laughs> Remember those? The kids today would not even touch a jukebox or a, or a jam box. Would, would you, would you, would you remember them, do you remember them jam boxes they had? Not you, Jimmy, but behind you. Do you remember the jam, have you ever seen them? They're like this big. No, they got a big handle on them. You got like, do like 20 D batteries in the back of them. Anybody remember those? Anybody ever walk down the road one on their shoulder? I, I mean, I don't even have nothing big enough up here. I pick that speaker up right there, and I could probably walk with that. And, but we all started imitating each other on that, and everybody's walking down the road just jamming. I mean, now we're imitating each other. We're showing our kids because now all the kids, I went to Thanksgiving, and I took a picture. I don't have it for the screen, or I would show you, but... Everybody in the family, it's like, I'm just like, look, I mean, I'm trying to visit with people. I even, I even quit doing what I was doing in the kitchen with dad and him just come in and just see what everybody's doing. And I'm getting a tattoo today. Nobody didn't even listen to anything. I mean, it's like that I was saying because they were all stuck on their phones. That's a problem. It really is. And, and, it's, and it's a subtle addiction that the enemy gets you just, just trapped a little bit of time, a little bit. You know, Todd... Hopefully when he comes, he preaches the sin baby message, you know, but it's just a little sin baby that's like introducing to another sin baby. It's introducing to another one. For long, you got these babies hanging all over you. This little sin babies. 
just hanging on to you, touching you, grabbing you, just loving on you, pulling you in. Because the more you're pulling into the sin, baby, the more you pull away from him. It's true. The more you spend on this, the less time you spend with him. I'm just going to say that. 1 Peter 2.21 For you have been called for this purpose. Since Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example. He left us an example for you to follow in his footsteps. This is a 24, now you can put a 24-7 up. This is a 24-7 walk. This is not a Sunday morning walk. This is not a walk in the park either. This is a 24-7 walk. Day in, day out. God's going to show you things. He's going to, he's going to say, listen, the Holy Spirit. And aren't you grateful for that? Aren't you grateful for God who sent Jesus to show us and then gave us the Holy Spirit for that power? So when you pray, you pray to God, thank you, God, for the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Some of you even question, who do I pray to? Who do I talk to? How do I do it? Anybody ever had that question? Like, how do you pray the Holy Spirit, the, the Jesus? You know, the Holy Spirit gets left out a lot of the equation. I mean, when you're praying, he gets kind of left out, you know. He is a person as well, the third part of the Trinity. And so, 24-7, this walk that we're walking, we should stay on. So God's going to show you things as you're walking this walk. He's going to show you things, and it's either up to you to make the corrections and start walking right, you know, if, if, he's, if he's showing you to, you know, walk with your hands up, then you probably just should walk with your hands up. You know, not like you're carrying a little big TV. If he has them at the goalpost, you have them here. If he says to have them here, have them here. Well, God, I got my hands up. Yeah, you got your hands up in the form of carrying a big TV. Not the jukebox. But here. We have to listen when he says, I'm going to tell you why at the end. I'm going to give you, the, I'm going to give you a clear message in the end. <clears throat> it's going to be to the point and clear. And hopefully you get it. Remember where you came from. But remember where you are and where you're going. I know where I've been. I know where I am. And I know where I'm going. Because my walk with Jesus. I know those three things. I won't be able to forget my past, although I have some. Could be age, but I'm not sure. <laughs> but I know I won't forget my past. It don't get to rise up against me. It don't get to turn itself against me. It don't get to use itself against me unless it's a testimony for goodness of God. And I know where I am right now. But because I know those things and I know where I'm going, because of the path I'm on now will tell me the path I'm going. The 24-7 walk. Walking in the tools that God gave us. Do you know that God gave us a tool? Jesus did not start his ministry until what? Until the Holy Spirit. Yeah. When he stepped, and what happened? When he stepped in the water, the heavens opened up, and the Spirit, and God spoke out, this is my book. The Spirit settled down upon him in the form of a dove this time is what the Word says. But immediately after that, what did Jesus do? He went and fasted. Maybe we're missing it. Maybe when they get saved up here, we need to throw them in the water. I mean, really. Like, you get saved, all right, Jesus forgave you of your sins, cleansed your heart, you're good, you love him, you believe him, yes. All right, we're going to throw you in the water now, and, and, and we're going to do it as an outward confession to man that what you just did here because maybe not everybody was watching now they're going to be watching you got in the water you come out of the water but wait a minute you didn't get the Holy Spirit we're going to throw you back in the water and hold you there however long it needs to happen the bubbles start coming out pull you back up and you start speaking in tongues and you start praying to God and you start living for God then what after that then we're going to send you on a fast where you strip down everything that you've had because that's going to give opportunity for the enemy to come in. He's going to try to strip everything away from you. You just got that fresh revelation, and you're going, you're going to fast. Because he's going to say, I can give you all this. 
I can give you all this. And you can quote the word of God. He's going to say, why don't you just jump? If God really loves you, why don't you just do this? If God really loves you, he'll protect you. No, you can make some stupid choices and you jump off a cliff, you're probably going to die. What the enemy was telling him is that if you jump off, see, Jesus is imitating his father at this point to the enemy. If you jump off, he's going to send a legion of angels to come and just capture you. You're not going to fall. You're not going to die. I mean, if you eat the fruit, surely you're not going to die. I mean, really? Really? The God that made the whole earth is going to make a, this, all this earth. He's going to make this garden. You named all the animals. But now all of a sudden, if you eat this one little bit of fruit, you're going to die? Really? Yeah, really. You jump off a cliff, you're probably going to die. 24-7 walk. Surround yourself by God's people. Jesus surrounded himself by people, but he taught those people. So when you surround yourself, make sure that you have a circle of people that are godly people that can pour into your life, influence in your life, and then you kind of step in, you grab a couple of people that have not known the way, and you bring them in, and you start teaching them, just like Jesus did, start discipling them, start showing them the right way, and you start walking like Jesus walked, and they'll walk like you walk, and then they'll meet Jesus and walk like he walked. But we have to be the start of some of these things. Make sure you have powerful people around you. Because you're called to reach out to a world, a lost world. Is it kind of clear? I mean, basically, we're to walk like Jesus walked. Do what Jesus did. Hear what he says and also obey what he's saying. Not just hearing. To those who have an ear, let him hear. Many verses end that way. Those who have an ear, let him hear. Do you have an ear to hear what he's saying? But do you have the strength to do what he said to do? No matter how weird it sounds. I don't care if the Lord says to you, you need to go to that person and tell them. I don't, if, if he says to you, Randy, Randy, you need to go to this person and just say grapes. If that's what the Lord said to do, you better do it. Because to that person, grapes might mean something so deep into them that it brings something out of them that God's been trying to pull out of them. And they get either revelation or they get healing. See, he shows us and he guides us and he leads us and he tells us what we should do. And I'm going to close with this story. A young man named Eric running from God over 15 years, deep in sin, deep in sin, sexual immorality, two wives, children from both wives. Our brother Mark that I met in Georgia, Visser, is that his last name? How you say it? I don't even know how you say it, Mark. Visser. Visser. He's a prophetic leader. He leads in the prophetic. So he was scheduled for a conference um, around Joplin. And it was this, like the 16th and 17th of October scheduled for this conference. And he felt the Lord say, I don't want you to do that conference those dates. Can you push the conference back? until it was Halloween weekend. So they pushed the, ho the conference back to Halloween weekend for him to speak at it. Because the Lord said, I want you to go see something over here in Dawsonville, Georgia. So, he, so he's rescheduled his conference to go to Dawsonville, Georgia, so God could show him what was going on in the water, because he'd not seen that before, the way it was going on. So here this guy, here's the word of the Lord say, listen, can't, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of hard to cancel a conference that you've scheduled for a while and go, hey, I just, I, I'm going to have to reschedule that because that imposes, I mean, they've already made up flyers. They've already did all this stuff. They've already got it all, the wheels all working. And you're like, you know, it's like having a, a babysitter for your dogs when you go on vacation. The babysitter last minute says, I can't watch your dog. Well, I can't go on vacation then. 
But this is what happened. So these guys had rescheduled, and they were kind. They said, we'll, we'll just reschedule. So they rescheduled for this other weekend. So he goes to Dawsonville, gets an encounter with Jesus. He's crying. I spoke a word over him. He's crying, and he's like, man, I've never seen nothing like this. And he's just excited in his spirit because he come from another country. He just got back in the country and just trying to get things rolling in, in the United States. And literally, so he, so he reschedules, has an encounter with Jesus, and goes to this conference on Saturday before Halloween. And Eric walks in young man in his 30s running for God for 15 years had a praying mom had a praying church because as soon as he walked in the doors everyone started crying and Mark was wondering why is everybody crying that the boy walked in the church it's going to get sad here in a minute but it's, it's about hearing him and obeying him following in his footsteps so at the end of the service, he sat in the service, the end of the service. Um, do we have that picture of, did you love those pictures? Do we have that picture of the boy? Um, so, this, so they put a guitar on him and spoke a word over him for his calling because he was a guitarist. He was a, a worship leader um, when he was young and he wanted to be, uh, he wasn't a full-blown, but he was a worship, worshiper. So they put the guitar on, they spoke over him, and then go to the next picture. And at the end, Mark said, you know what? I feel like that we're supposed, to, we're supposed to get in the water. So they pulled this baptismal out. Thank God that there's a baptismal on hand. They pulled it out. And on the video, and it was longer, so I didn't play the whole video. But they put him under and brought him back and put him under. I mean, they just kept slamming him under the water. I mean, it was like, it was, it was, they would just kept doing it. I mean, it's like, <laughs> and he was like catching his breath and throwing him under. But the last time, he said, hold me under. And he held him under. And he come up, he went home that night, wrecked with Jesus. Come to church Sunday, they started getting a game plan on what your life going to do. What are you going to do? How are we going to transition your life? How are we going to, where are we going to do? Where are we going to put you at? Just mold you and disciple you and bring you back in. His mom's excited. Everyone in the church is excited. So he goes into Joplin Monday, Halloween. And he's over at a um, friend's house female hopefully he was telling her about Jesus what he just did but there was a knock at the door now mind you this guy was running from God didn't care about anything drugs all the stuff that he was into mama prayed his church prayed the people prayed he walks in the church, gets in the water, gets wrecked. I know I talk about the water a lot. The more I talk about the water, the more it comes out of the word to me. Watched a documentary last night. I'm going to Mars, and, and, and they were 14 plus years with this Land Rover on Mars looking for water. That's all they were doing. They spent billions of dollars for these two Rand Rovers to go on Mars. Billions of dollars to see if there was water. Why? Because water, where there's water, there's life. The young boy gets in the water, gets wrecked. Sunday goes to church. Monday goes to Joplin. Knock at the door. He opens the door. It was the lady's ex-husband. Point blank, shot him in the head. Killed him dead. He was dead before he hit the ground. Went back. Killed the wife in front of the nine-year-old son. Cops surrounded him and killed himself. Three people. My point is, and I know that's sad, but there's, there's, a, there's a good part to it. Brought clarity to the mom where her son was going. brought definition to hearing the voice of God and obeying the voice of God. See, we don't think it's important. But had Mark kept the schedule of the 16th and 17th of October and missed out on the water, that encounter with Jesus, bringing that water to that city, to that church, to that young man, 
he probably would not be in heaven today. Listen to that one voice that one time doing the one thing he said to do, saved a life for eternity. How many times do we miss it? How many times do we hear the voice of God and not obey what he says to do? Someone's life could be counting on it. Stand. We could all get up and dance again. <laughs> but this is serious. This is serious times that we're living in. It's so vital that we hear the voice of God clearly, knowing His voice from the world's voice and obeying it behind the hearing. We have water immersions on Sunday night. We're doing it for the, for the people outside, but we're also doing it for you. I really would like to see you here. We have prayer on Wednesday night. I know you got a lot going on in life. But if we could take it and put it down for a moment, we come and pray on a Wednesday night from 7 to 8. Getting ready to start a Bible study on Wednesday night, either before that or after that. Brother Steve, we haven't got the logistics down of it. Some of you want to be discipled. He's going to talk about it. He's going to talk about all the things that God has. This and Steve Brown is a wise man. I trust him with this. It's going to be amazing. And you're going to learn so much. So either before you come in and get discipled and go into prayer or you go to prayer and then get discipled. Either way, we're going to figure out how it's going to work. It's vital, guys, that we pray. We went through almost 50 copies of Todd's book. I'm going to get some more. Have you guys read it? Anybody read it? Is it impacting you? Encountering? I mean, is it wrecking you? It was so good. If you haven't read it, read it. We got one more copy up there unless we pray. Listen, you have to get that book. You have to get that book. If you do not, you just don't. <laughs> We've got to pray, guys. We've got to be here on Wednesdays and pray. As I said before, I'd rather be here on Wednesday than today. Really, I would. Because that's what's going to change things. The prayer. We can preach and have the atmosphere of worship and all those things, but, but, but that prayer is going to change things. Come on Wednesday and pray. One hour, that's all we ask. We, just, we open it up right before and we close right at 8. You can walk out the door at 8 o'clock. It's been, it's been powerful. We've gotten wrecked. There's been times we've all almost fell on the floor and rolled, you know, rolled around and the Holy Spirit, just the weight of the Spirit just settled on us and that's okay. Thank you guys for letting me go over a few minutes. As I said, McDonald's is open late. Or wherever. They're, they're, they're there. We're fasting right now for just a few minutes. You can count this as a fast. He went over 10 minutes. I fasted for 10 minutes. <laughs> count this as a fast. <clears throat> it's important that we pray. It's important that we walk after Jesus. It's important that we hear his voice clearly, knowing his voice. Not continuing to say, and, and I know I'm, God said this, God said that, God said this, God said that. You might not really hear him as well as you think you do. So let's um, tune that up, check those places. Make sure it is God speaking to you. The outcome of what God says is going to be good. Just close your eyes for a minute. The altar's open. If you've not been walking like you're supposed to walk, I mean, if there's something that you need to tweak up on, you know, you saw Jesus walking crooked and you're still walking straight, I don't know. Come and give it to him. Ask him to teach you. Ask him to show you. Ask him to guide you and lead you. That's the most vital thing that we can do right now. I don't care how long you've been serving God. I don't care how long you've been in the faith. We're all learning and growing as we, as we go. I'm still growing. There's things that, that, he's, that he's allowed me to do for years. All of a sudden, he's like, I don't walk that way. 
And Michael, well, I don't want to walk that way either. The world might do it. But just because they do it don't mean it's okay. Father, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you for your people right now. We thank you for that young man that, that come into the church, got in the water, got wrecked, got an encounter with you, yet he had an encounter with death. Lord, we thank you that he is alive because the obedience of one man, hearing your voice, doing what you said to do, and the obedience of another man saying, okay, we can change the date and not being displeased or not being dysfunction about or not commanding that they stay with that date because, Father, we thank you that you talk to us clearly and that we can hear your voice like I'm speaking right now. In our hearts, in our minds, in our souls. We thank you, Lord, for the ones that are going to come and pray and that you will bless them and encourage them. Help them to keep walking like you walked. Whatever that walk looks like, to them. You show it to us different sometimes in some areas. But Father, the walk is straight and it's narrow. And your word says there's going to be few that find it. Help us, God, to be that few, to line up and center up with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Anybody want to pray?